week one of the North American split in 2014, the spring split has sprung. And we are into the matchup. Ooh. Yeah. You wouldn't wait on that one. I feel like we're in like elementary school. Right. Leona Olaf, Cassidy, Kazix. We've seen him pretty much on the ban list besides Cassidy last game. He found yeah. himself in. Kazix, though. Kazix really sneaking himself into more and more bans. Yeah. We haven't seen him dominating that many games, but definitely here in North America. It's also stopping Boy Boy from playing his assassin type mid laners. Boy Boy is one of the few people who may bring out a Katarina. That's something we got to keep our eyes out for. He was one to. I like those. Oh, the, or, okay, I'm going to start over there. I liked his unorthodox picks. Me when too. he used to play top lane, he'd bring the Gragas out in the top lane, yep. stuff like that. He was always known as a fighter. And uh, we'll see if the mid lane, we kind of say that his, his 2v1 capabilities weren't what he liked in the top lane. So the mid lane really suits Voiboy Boy well. It gives him that chance to fight, and it gives him the chance to be up in the face of his opponent all the time. Yeah, and bands are definitely shifting around a whole bunch from when we saw the promotion tournaments. There's no yeah, that's true. Elise ban, there's no Shivana ban, there's no Mundo ban, there's no Annie ban. Of course, three of those four get picked right away because they weren't banned. So that's going to be big for Daydream, and Thresh is still left up within this lineup. We'll have to see what Zekent really plays here. He's something someone new we're also seeing coming in. Streams know him quite a bit, so mm -hmm. he's looking to make a mark today. Dominate, bringing out a little bit of Wukong previously, which was great in the jungle. And he is someone that I think that the mechanics really work in his favor in that aspect because you you need mechanics to do yeah. that kind of jungle. Dominate is such an aggressive player, sometimes to a fault. I remember watching his Jarvan back uh, pre-season three. Mm -hmm. He's actually coming off of a one-year ban, which is why he wasn't in the LCS Absolutely. last split. Stuck around this whole time. Definite props to him for Completely being able to... Completely reformed that personality. Yep, come back into the LCS and be eligible to play, but he would on Jarvan like flash just to EQ, just to be in range of his ultimate. And then like the guy would flash out and be like, all right, got the flash. And like, no, <laughs> you just shouldn't have even went in. But he's the type of person right. who will overcommit on a just super quick amount of time. Sometimes it works out for him, but he's got to watch out for it. It looks like Curse is going to shy away from showing that mid laner anytime soon in these first three picks. I think it's something that Hurt EG last game, and it's something that Coast is also leaving for a last pick, that mid lane. We see Vayne again being hovered over. Seems to yeah. just be the hover of the day, but not the pick. Now just think about it. Do we really want to go with Really? Vayne? Probably not. Oh, Teemo. Jinx, Teemo, <laughs> Lucian, and ooh. WizFusion did play a game of Varus in the promotion tournament, one of the few to actually pull it out. And to pull it out against Kopp would be rather bold, only because Kopp was the guy who used to play the most Varus in North America. Uh, I would have liked the pick, mm -hmm. because they already have a bunch of damage coming out with Shivana. We'll see if they end up going with it. I like this as well. This is pretty much the first split of LCS, bringing back Nidalee a little bit. We haven't seen her too much at all. It became the poke game of Nidalee of Xerath, of Varus going on, what they call the Legolas Varus. You go for the quick Last Whisper of Bloodthirster and just poke people out. So yeah. they're, they're really switching up the status, strats to be used in this meta. I want to see what Curse comes back with because they get to pick their two solo lanes right here. They no longer have Jackie in the middle. <laughs> There's no I Jackie. wonder if they're going to do the Trundle Yasuo thing that we saw yesterday. They need the a top European laner. Challenger. That would work quite well. Trundle can land against Shivana, and Yasuo can combo off of the displacement from a Trundle pillar, which is absurd to me, but it absolutely works. And uh, let's see what they choose to go with. It could be Mundo. Boy Boy just seems like he wants to play Yasuo mid, no matter what. <laughs> He's a fighter. It's not a Kali, it's Yasuo. We'll see what he locks in. You said the Katarina could be a choice, but with this team, it doesn't look like people are going to be squishy enough towards the end of a fight to All get right. the resets that you want. Yasuo does get locked in with that Mundo. It's going to be a lot of hectic and chaotic fighting from these teams. You're going to have uh, Elise, Mundo, and Yasuo just running around in your face the whole time. I got another Yasuo fan. Hit. We want to know it. Mm -hmm. His E dash, which is very spammable, yeah. is the only dash in the game which will actually get stopped in its tracks by stuns and roots. So if he goes partway to the target and then, say, Varus hits him with his ult, stops dead, doesn't make it to the target. Same thing would happen if he got stunned by Annie. Other move blocks would take him directly and to the stop. target and then stun. No, Yasuo. He's different. Interesting. Definitely changed the style of play. Looking at the other side, it does, like, besides Annie and Varus, mm -hmm. it's like he can kind of dodge around that. But those are the two he will want for this fight. Could be a top lane or a jungle. 
depending on where they want to go. Oh. Trundle is really good Trundle against Mundo. for their own. Yeah, let's talk about that a little bit because Trundle isn't something we've seen since the Rain Man. No. Same with Teemo. So <laughs> Rain Man should definitely be in Season 4 of the LCS. But really, oh. uh, right here, the reason Trundle's good against Mundo is Mundo's early laning phase is very weak. His only goal is to yeah. stay alive and farm. And Trundle is extremely close to outscaling him because he can steal resists and he also has a fairly weak laning phase and then offers more utility in team fights because of his spammable pillar. I love this pick against Mundo and I'm glad we're seeing an appearance. It already happened once in Europe. And now North America's doing the same. Now that lane it helps, but does is Trundle synergize with this team with what they have actually brought mm. with the Shivana coming in, Annie? Are they going to have what it takes? Because there's not a lot of lockup in that fight besides your your Varus and your Annie to come in. You know, honestly, we're going to have a quick remake right mm -hmm. here. But Trundle, to me, back when I used to play him, um, works with pretty much everything as long as the enemy team doesn't have too many dashes. Because if the other team is just trying to run away from you for the most part, the pillar alone is enough catch for almost your entire team. Right. So it works with crowd control because you're just stacking a whole bunch on top of itself, and it works without. It has to do with the enemy team's lineup. All right, so if you're against a Riven, it's not so good. If you're against no. people that are like... Riven is bad against... Dash like, and done, then you can might be able to catch them. Someone like... Uh, I think it's good against Galio and Kennen. Like, I used to pick it a lot against Kennen and Galio. Oh, yeah, those were bump, things. Also them. because he has the large amount of CC reduction, and he could just like run right through that stuff, but... It's an interesting choice. We'll have to see. It's the way they use it. You can kind of see behind us what the lineups are. It's the first time we're going to be mm -hmm. seeing Elise coming back in here. It's a champion that Odd One used to get the challenger when he did. Uh, jungler that's making a not a huge comeback, but a little bit of a resurgence due to the early oh, game geez. aggression. Yeah. But it's also being banned out, so that's another reason we're not seeing it. Mm -hmm. Elise was extremely banned in the European LCS. I believe second most banned behind Cassidy. And, you know... Being able to get that for I Will Dominate will be good, although it's extremely easy to overcommit on a lease. You just repel in, and you say, oh, God, what have I done? <laughs> you try to go back behind the first turret, and you realize you're a little too deep, and especially that's going to be against a Varus and an Annie. You don't want to do that Annie in the early game. We'll have to see. I like the point you made last game about Trinkets being down for the early part of the game and that mm -hmm. being such a pivotal time to be used for aggression. Hope we see that sometime. Exactly. Trinkets have that early cooldown at the start of the game. It gives teams time to make it all the way into the enemy jungle, yeah. set up shop, and unless a support buys wards right at the start of the game and puts them down to preempt invades, you're not going to see someone running through there. Now, with that being said, you need a lot of level one catches. Yeah. The team that would be invading in this one would be Coast because they have the Annie who can charge up her stun on the fountain. Get there quick. They got enough to get through the jungle with Burnout and that Nidalee. So let's take a look quick and see who you think will win this next matchup. According to LOLEsports.com, 72% of you say this next game will go to Team Curse. Yeah, and while you're at LOLEsports.com, click on the tickets link to secure your spot to join our live studio audience for an upcoming game day match set. Yeah, you get to go and check out the taping. It's actually pretty sweet in the studio. We do it live. Yeah. And then we tape it. Right. Just for posterity. Sure. Did I use the right word there? I, think I right. hope so. I think that's the wrong word. <laughs> <laughs> As they are loading into the matchup, this is the beginning of a new season for so many teams, and we have to remember that as well. To see falter happen, to see teams falter right now, or to see teams do poorly, mm -hmm. we've seen that before. And then we've seen some teams come back and make one of the longest win streaks in the yeah. LCS. So spring split of season three, Dignitas was one and two on their first week, and then went on a ten-game win streak. Yeah. Uh, it can happen. And that was broke by Curse. That was a crazy season. Curse started the season with an eight-game win streak. Yeah. Cloud Nine, of course. Only lost three times last split. That was from start to end. Anything can happen in the LCS Rift. All right, guys. Game three on the day. Curse versus Coast. We are on the Rift, and Yasuo is in game again. So one of those new faces we were looking at is going to be on the match. But both of these teams also sporting some of those new faces as well that we'll go through during the game. Triple Doran Shield are ready for Curse. You can see Voiboy has it because the auto attack harassed from Nidalee very early on in the game. Mm is very difficult to deal with. You see teams trying to lane swap frequently to get Yasuo into a favorable position. If they wanted to swap him against Trundle, I think that would be a good idea. But once again, we put the five people in a line and they decide to stare at each other. They don't have their trinkets yet. 
That's a sad, sad thing. No, yeah, they are kind of keeping it backed off. Daydreaming. Daydreaming. I feel like this is just a gentleman's agreement. I'm just like, you know, level ones are hard. <laughs> I don't want to do them. Let's just look at each other. You can see, like, games go very wrong or very right early on in the game. It is diminished now since it's only 60% of the max gold. So First Blood is not giving 600 gold to the team. Nope, but Kosa's is ahead. 2.4 to 2.3. There you go. Ooh, good catch. Yeah. It's Making real moves. Early game. You think hard enough and you get more gold. So a few of the wards have actually been placed as soon as they come out. Uh, just above Dragon. And Wiz Fusion knows that he may be seen in this instance. As that was a, you could say, deeply placed ward over the wall. But it's not deep itself. It's going to be able to see. People. Yeah, might as well. Going to be trying to see <laughs> where Shivana walks around in lanes. And I, I think a lot of this early game is just going to be jungler-wise. Straight up farm. That's exactly what Nintendo X wants to do on Shivana. And I will dominate Selyse. Does have to get a few levels under her belt anyway before she gets access to all her spells. Interested to see how Nintendo X does. He was one to bring us Leona, a few other junglers, starting off with that Jarvan Dorans in the jungle as well. We'll see if he does anything different here. It looks like he's going to go orthodox on Shivana, but that means that he should be in the other junglers' jungle if there will be as much jungling Soon as enough. you say. Soon enough. I've actually noticed Time will tell. that especially since the jungler got a little bit harder to kill in the 2014 season, the early counter jungling not only is harder, but not as rewarding since there's plenty of camps up for the jungler to take yeah, anyway right. if one of them gets counter jungled. So for the first little bit of the game, it is laners against laners, not generally junglers messing up all their stuff in the first four minutes. Boy Boy taking himself a turret shot, but he'll stay safe, making sure he gets a ward. He says, I got a ward up top. Nobody has been seen, so they're already starting to communicate what could happen here as the junglers starting to finish their rounds. And we're going to see what the gank can provide here. Coming from Nintendo, they could have a bit of damage, but I don't think they have enough kill potential. However, the Elise on Shifter with Void Boy Ooh. could be very, very bad. Yeah, Nintendo did get spotted coming through as well, and he's finding a bunch of empty spots where he would have wanted to counter jungle. And those things spawned right as he walked by. But see, like, even when he leaves one, I don't think this is going to set back I Will Dominate all that much. There's a two. Ooh, so set him back a little bit. He'll be able to clear those. We'll see if it deters Dominate. Does he leave the jungle and get angry, or does he keep farming? I think he just goes because it's white, <laughs> because it's of right course. next to it. And he can still take that down with all the single target least damage. No, and he's going to be behind just a tad from that big wolf. Doesn't affect his mentality too much. And he's still actually a level up on uh, Nintendo, so he's, he's doing fine. Somehow, still a level up. Yeah, and let's talk about this bottom lane matchup right here, because Varus Annie doesn't have the same stun chaining that like an Annie Jinx would, where she can put the Flame Chompers underneath, but it's still close to a kill lane. So if Daydreaming can land a good stun onto Zekant, the stacking bit of burst damage that Wiz Fusion can put on them is actually very potent in this lane. So Cop needs to make sure to keep his distance, and as long as they keep shoving in Coast, they yeah. will have an edge. They're trading very well. I like Wiz Fusion's trade back there. Zion Spartan takes a bit of his own damage. They really don't have too much of... Well, they actually have some dive potential between these two with that Repel and with Quas on Mundo. So Spartan has to be quite careful here. Mm -hmm. He started with that Longsword, which yeah. is an extremely bold opening means he wants to get to Blade of the Ruin King as quickly as possible. But with that, since I will dominate has went up and ganked him, it's going to be a little harder for him to stay in that lane. He's going to be sharing that experience with Nintendo right now. It's going to be a little bit harder for him to farm up, but this is good pressure. Dominate knows that his mid lane is pushed, the bottom lane is pushed, and they're working off of everything they have in order right now. Quaz still just trying to harass, and this will go on obviously into the late game with that Mundo. They don't have too much poke, so once they do get down to the turret game, it's going to be full on sieges for them. It'll get a bit harder, so they're trying to get what they can now. And we're going to see these guys trying to farm up a whole bunch, especially yep. someone like Voiboy's Yasuo. Uh, the last game we saw Yasuo was in Ox, and he did the Blade of the Ruined King, which didn't actually take advantage of his crit passive. On someone right. like Yasuo, you go generally Infinity Edge and Static Shiv, which leaves you at 90% crit. And I can actually see that Voiboy has 5% crit on his rune page, meaning that's almost guaranteed the build he's going to be going for here, because he's trying to hit that 100% to crit every time. Nintendo Dax forced to stay towards this top lane a little bit. We see Shifter on Nidalee, and we've seen Nidalee 
in a few of the tournaments lately coming out. Some teams not really using her correctly, but what's the right. way? It has to be for that push, and it has to be for the tower poke. Yeah, Nidalee is generally played in compositions that have high amounts of push potential, and Nidalee needs to snowball ahead in a lot of these games, especially in this situation. It's very close to being a full poke comp here. Shifter gets ahead. Him and Fusion will poke down using basically both of their Qs, the piercing arrow and also the spear. But then, because they have the trundle, their disengage is so right. strong. Curse would try to come in. Back in the day, like season one, season two, the first few poke comps always had a That's jungle true. trundle. That's true, I remember that. Before trundle was a good enough laner. And now, that looks like what Coast is setting up. It's a full on poke. Bring him back, Trundle, if he can't be in the jungle, put him in the top lane, and he seems to be faring quite well. They are all even, 42, what was 41 to 41 CS in that top lane as they decide to back and get their buys in. We see the Giants belt for Quaz. We'll have to see what Zion Spart decides to do if he goes for that attack speed. Actually, he goes for a Megatron right away. Yeah, he needs to give himself some of that Cleaver resilience. Uh, also, the only thing he's expected to get ganked with is I Will Dominate, who's also doing yeah. full magic damage on Elise. That's true. Stop a little bit of that chunk damage on the front end. Dominate, looks like he'll be pulling down Dragon a little bit here. I thought he was going to clear, but it looks like they're just going to clear a pink ward. Very nice by Nintendo. I think it's going to slow down the lanes just a little bit. 200 gold lead is in favor of Curse, but that's just because of what's happening in CS a little bit, as well as in this jungle. Yeah, very slow early game. I think Boy Boy has done a good job farming this mid lane and not getting out harassed by Shifter. Uh, if he keeps up this farming, he's actually going to be very potent come team fight base. Cop goes for the damage. I like that he's still on his normal champion. So obviously we haven't seen Misfortune in quite some time. I like the fact that they kept Cop on Curse as well. You see with kind of Mash Me to Fusion and Chaos, they were finding an AD carry that mixed. But with Cop, they put that chance out there and he actually changed. Kind of like X Smithy did in, in passive to aggressiveness. And Cop plays a totally different style of game now. Yeah, well, his Draven was extremely successful for them in the promotion yeah. tournament. Just decided to go with Caitlyn here because they want the extra wave clear. It's very dangerous for them, actually, to pick a Yasuo if they did not have wave clear. Right. And Cop will be almost his sole responsibility to keep the pushes back from Coast, which could lead to some pretty big issues knowing that Coast is going with the po poke push comp. I can't remember exactly, but during the promotion games, you remember Curtis would have quite a bit of a lead, and then they would somewhat throw it away because that time of the game where it's, what do we do next? We got a team fight, but nothing, the lanes aren't ready to push. So you have to get caught back up in that again. It's still very early in this game, and you can see Wish Fusion already trying to put out Harass at the turret. And like I said, they've been trading that back very well. If Cops trying to aggress, Wish Fusion does too, so they don't lose that lane by any means. No, not whatsoever. They're doing a pretty solid job keeping even in that lane. No gold items by either one of the supports mm -hmm. either. Yeah, good point. Which is surprising considering how passive both of their lanes actually are. They're two of the longest ranged AD carries, uh, base-wise, if you don't consider Jinx's minigun to be base, yeah, but right. 575 for Varus and 650 for Caitlyn. So they're very passive in most senses. I would have expected the supports to at least get a coin so that they could benefit a little bit off this farm fest. Dominate trying to spidey sense in the bottom lane to make sure if his team needed any help. Really just a ward coming in. As soon as you saw Nintendo Dax head towards the top side of the jungle, you can see the pings coming out. They're over towards their blue side. Looks like they're going to keep it safe. Actually, this is just for Shifter to, to gather up his own resources on the wraiths and go back into lane. Gold's actually being brought up pretty close by Coast mm -hmm. here. It's 10 minutes on the game. Not much has happened yet. It's, it's been standard lanes. The tier is going to spell that as well. Mm -hmm. Shifter starting with tier instead of going Athene's Unholy Grail because he's against a physical damage dealer. So he doesn't want to get that Athene's. And instead he's going with tier for the spear spam mana. Going around Zekent's. Zekent's Lulu actually. I probably should have known that was going to come out. Known for his Lulu. Able to play it quite well. We saw it last game for EG. Wasn't the best of initiations for him. And again, Curse doesn't have ex an initiation with this team exactly. It looks like they're going to have to force themselves mm -hmm. into fights. And that could create a problem. Well, they do have the Lulu ultimate. Which to me is going to be their initiation. Because all they'll right, need right. is I will dominate Quas or Voiboy Boy to be in the fray. Pop a Lulu ultimate. And then Voiboy Boy can alt off of it to make the knockup longer. Mm -hmm. 
Nice little wind wall right there to stop a spear. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of that. Cheeky little play from Boy Boy. He is definitely warmed up and ready to get these moves in with his mechanics. And looking at both teams again, besides the Annie, we were talking about Annie Varys, a lot of the compositions we're just seeing overall don't have a super amount of crowd control to them. No, but this Coast team absolutely does, I think. Just the spammability of the pillar and the fact that both the AD carry and support have an AOE crowd control on top of them, I yeah. think they should have no problem staying in fights or chasing it. Yeah, the pillar's a little crazy when you think about it. It is a slow, but it yeah. also can completely block your path. It blocks your aspect. path, knocks you backwards. <laughs> it's Once you get 40% CDR, very close to 100% uptime. Wow. It's one of the, I think it's one of the best crowd control spells in the game. We'll see if they can detect this aggression coming in here. They back right off. They have the pings coming in. I believe may have had the wards for it as well. And they don't. They were just able to really read that one out. No, they do. It's just the buff that they saw. They were definitely, definitely kind of spending a lot of time trading <laughs> with each other down here. I think Nintendo X should be farming yep. right now on Trivana. If he's not taking pace ahead of I Will Dominate Elise, Elise has more potential to create impact in lanes than Nintendo X and Shivana does. Mm -hmm. We'll have to keep an eye on I Will Dominate as well because usually a jungler would sit there. That's what we saw Dominate doing. But really, he was in. Once he known he was seen, he was out. Usually a jungle will kind of cycle back around and see if they can get a second time on. Nintendo would find and dominate in the jungle. This relieves a bit of pressure on the lanes as far as they, as well as when they can see each other. But it doesn't mean anybody's safe by any means. They're feeling pretty safe, though. I mean, Dominate is somehow a level ahead of Nintendo, which to me just says... Still, after getting countered. Uh-huh, he's... Exactly. The early game counter jungle didn't do anything. No. It just wasted a little bit of time by Nintendo X and just told both people to keep on farming. <laughs> when the Blade of the Ruined King gets finished, though, in this top lane, I think Zion Spartan might be able to go and make a bit more of an impact. He should be able to trade really well with Mundo once that item gets completed. So with Trundle bringing the Ignite, and is, is he actually someone that can kill Mundo in an overall fight? I think Mundo would just run away from that. He can threaten him greatly. Yeah. He can make him pop his ultimate and get out of the lane. That is Which is, is what anyone wants That's to do bigger. to Mundo, yeah. just move him out. Can't teleport into the fight without your ultimate. You aren't exactly Mundo. Yep. We'll see what they can do for the dragon. The wards have been cleared, replaced, and cleared again. Ooh, an ultimate from the backside as the turret goes down. And it is going to be an appearance from Shifter towards the bottom lane here, but they're kind of walking this one through. They get the turnaround. Here comes Quas with the teleport to the bottom lane. Nintendo put himself in the front, and here is now coming into the fight with Fusion from the back. Looks like he'll be able to help out just a little bit. But both teams very back yeah, and forth in that here. fight, considering Boy Boy puts up the wall, tries to go in on Nintendo, but he gets locked up immediately. Fusion on the barrier. It's Quaz with the flash into the fight, and the first blood from the Piltover Peacemaker on the back line from Cop. Trying to behind the too, authority. Though. Curse, Boy Boy, very low. Here comes Spartan on the backside, dodging out the spear. Curse is staying alive. A beautiful job with fancy footwork as they come in. They keep deterring and getting more kills. Cop with a double kill overall in the fight. He's the only one on the front line right now. He knows what he can do for himself. And when all is said and done, Riv, it's actually a 2-4-2. Two, two. So the turret actually goes down right there for Chris. Let, we got to take a look at this one again. Boy Boy came in around the back, and it didn't seem like he really got much done. He did put up a good win while they kind of saved his skin a bit. Then it was swapped out. Quas's turn to go in. Zion Spartan around the back as well. He just eats I Will Dominate right off the bat. And then his ape, he gets the one thing at night when he's up in the air. And then his on the retreat right here. Crazy, crazy fight. Almost too hard to follow. Thanks, Yasuo. <laughs> yeah, thanks, man. Thanks for dashing around so much. So crazy many man. dashes, jumps, and it really was a great fight. I got to commend both teams as well for, you know, microing in and out the damage that they were taking. Some a little too close. Daydreaming walked in at an inopportune time, and they, they want it again. They want to say now, with those alts down, if you don't have it, who is going to be able to win the fight? Yeah, but look at Curse's ults. Oh. They're pretty much all up at this point. So they would want to get an initiation if they can avoid getting poked out by Nidalee Spears. Easier said than done, though, with a blue buff level 11 minute trying to take down the dragon. Where Even Quas. is Dominate? Dominate actually coming around from the side. A half health dragon saunters his way back into the den. It doesn't look like he's going to get too much attention here before the champions do. Good poke from Wiz Fusion. And as they just completely set up, those bushwhacks, those traps right there in front of Quaz, these actually 
prove very useful because the escape for somebody on the front line is to go back around Dragon, and that'll revision the entire team for you if they're trying to run away. That's why oftentimes people will combo Nidalee with Caitlyn. Yeah, it was just right. not possible Perfect. in this game because Cop had already picked up the Caitlyn. It's too many traps sometimes. <laughs> Ouch. A lot of poke on both sides here. And with Zon Spartan cheating back up towards the top, it's Curse's turn to come in for this. But they're very vulnerable to a lot of spear poke here. Let's see how quickly they can get that dragon down. They have a nice front line there. Zika uh -oh. jump in. Dominate gets the smite down. A beautiful chain of corruption going into the fight to lock them up. Cop coming up with another kill. He's 3-0 and oh on the game right now. It's going to be Yasuo going down. That's Boy Boy not being able to help in the fight. Cop in a bad spot. Can he get over the wall? The Blade of the Rune King is used. Actually, the ultimate, rather, of Zion Spartan is used. And they are able to crush down, eat, and chew up. Quaz on the other oh. side. Oh, and the barrier. He got, you know he was wincing on that one. He was ready to take that spear. They just about sniped him over the wall. Crazy game so far. Yeah, the very high-level yes, dragon fight right there because I will dominate was able to burst the dragon down so quickly, and then you wouldn't expect a team like yeah. Co Coast to so readily dive all the way in since they have very strong poke. But because Trundle got into that fight at the right time, he was able to make a lot of action. I really love the use of Shifter's Nidalee here. He is not a Nidalee that stays on the outside. He will come up and pounce on your face, even in a full team fight, getting himself into danger. So these guys are pushing themselves to the limit here. Four to three. We're getting kills. We're only 18 minutes into the game. And the gold is super close here with a turret dropped on each side because champions have been the focus for the last few minutes here. It was a very slow early game. Yeah. And now we're really picking up Super the slow. You can see that Voiboy's Yasuo was definitely getting in the fray a lot of these fights. But he doesn't quite have his items yet. When he gets an Infinity Edge, he's really going to start beasting people down because he will hit that 100 percent crit. Another Yasuo fact, actually, is he's the only champion in the game whose crits don't do double damage. It's kind of a fairness thing for his critical strikes. Instead of <laughs> a crit doing 200% damage, which would be double, it's 180% damage for him. Since by his passive, he gets double the crit anyway. It's more of a reliable randomness for him once he gets I'm those items. I'm thinking he wants all those crits right now. He's able to get himself out with a little bit of shield there, keeping the flow up. And he'll be able to keep safe as well. They have a Siege Wave. This should be the turret in their favor. And there's really nothing to stop them in getting it. There's no rotation. And there's nothing being worked on by Curse either. They shouldn't be accepting something like this without something happening. Yeah, Curse is trying to push mid lane. But Coast just caught them yeah. in a cycle of going back to base. And it was well played by Coast right there. Let's see if Shifter can scare them off. They have the ward necessary by Wraith for this transition to the top lane, but there is a train of power and pain coming down from that bottom lane. It looks like they do see that they're thwarted off of this, so they slow down the roll a little bit, head back on the defensive side, and they just set up a little bit of a garrison in mid. We'll see if Curse can thwart off this next turret attack. Their, their engagements have really been on the objective, so if it's not going to be Dragon or a turret, I think Curse is just sitting and waiting. Yeah, Curse... Might be waiting for that next fight right there. And Zion Spartan still doesn't have his Blade of the Ruined King, but you can see. Ooh. <laughs> oh, ha, ha. He, he. That oh, was uh, a little cheeky. Yeah, well, Quas is not going where he wants right now. So. <laughs> no, no, not at all. <laughs> Zion Spartan has control He's of space this jamming, though. Even with Sunfire Cape and Ninja Top, he just cannot deal with Zion Spartan's power. That's why I love the Trundle against Mundo so much. It's, it's not something that you would have thought would completely just kind of take Mundo out of his element, but... Sometimes you got to think outside the box, and that's what a lot of the professional players have been doing now. Trundle definitely making a little bit of a comeback here on those early games. Shivana is on the Mundos, and I don't know. We haven't seen the Yasuo Trundle yet. They work well together, but how does that match up? Yeah, the Yasuo Trundle right there. What are you talking about? <laughs> I, got, I got a little bit lost because Yasuo Trundle on the same team is great synergy. Right. No, that's what I was talking about. But how does that match up? Because he can beat Mundo. He can beat Shiv in the early game. So it doesn't work for Yasuo Trundle. Does he have the same mm, I yeah. see. Yasuo would have done very well against Trundle in the early game yeah. if they decided to put up that type of matchup with each other. But mainly, mainly they just decided not to do that because Voiboy had a good matchup against Nidalee as well. He's That's actually out-farmed Shifter, and the wind wall can block the spears. So it's a very strong matchup in that mid lane. I think he's enjoying that as well, being able to wind wall spears. Kind of get that. If you're having a rough game, you just wind wall a few spears, get your spirits back up. Figure out what's going on. He's not liking this though. Zion Spartan putting down the pain in the bottom lane. Looks like he is Blade of the Rune King. No, it's just a cutlass right now. So he would have been able to get some slow, but no full engage. So Zion Spartan 
He's in a good spot. He's happy with the play so far. Mm -hmm. Still a lot of farming going on here. I will dominate. Was not able to make any type of early game impact on Elise, which is a bit of a letdown, considering in champion select they decided to first pick that. And they're going to need him to make a lot of important initiations since Coast has such a... I feel like Coast has such a strong poke presence, but yeah. they just haven't set up any type of poke yet. That's what we were talking about, right? You have the Nidalee. Their fights have been all circling gauges. They're not using the Spears to poke. They're not using the Spears to say, we're pushing this lane. We're going to dictate that it's mid lane. Curse is dictating everything right now. Yeah, Curse, even though they kind of feel like they lost that last fight, uh, are keeping the waves pushed as well as possible. You can see Voiboy now matching up against Trundle. Yeah. And Zalan Spartans went so heavily in the defensive itemization right now. He finished his Spirit Visage. Uh, yes, cooldown reduction is very good on Trundle, but I think Blade of the Rune King is even better, and I right. wish he would have finished that first. Kind of put a little too much worry into the pressure that he was getting from Dominate and Quaz, so maybe their effectiveness worked into his mindset for this game, forcing him into that first, but you are correct. It is hurting him. We'll have to see if he can really put himself into these team fights. They're winning it when they get it, which is... Very, very good. Two He's to two in turrets. They're just not getting it very often, right? That's a 1,000 gold lead. Almost yep. 2,000, one and a half. So it's nothing to really worry about for either team and nothing to really sit back on if you're the team with more gold. Yeah, Boy Boy's really close to that Infinity Edge. Though. Oh! 650 Chris gold, cross but he's, poke there. he's not going to be able to get that Infinity Edge before this next fight. This is what Coast needs to do. They need to yep. set up, throw the Spears out, start getting Cursed to be a little bit chaotic in their positioning. See if they can get Dragon. They completely gave it up. They weren't in position for it, and they instead would rather take that mid-turn. They, they think they're going to unlock this, but this is a chase for Coast. If they want to make it, you can't really escape oh. Pillars if he doesn't want to let him go. They are on point right now. If Coast can keep doing that, there is nothing you can do in a fight. There is no sustained heal to be coming off of anybody on Curse right now. So they are dealing with that damage, and it sticks. Dominate still trying to take that blue buff with that damage on him, and he's going to have to go back out to this, not into lane. So dominate, just not answer it at yeah. this point. I, we're in a strange situation in this game because Coast, they have the Nidalee poke, but they also have a strong amount of initiation. It's a mix between yeah. what a poke comp would be or what a really strong chase initiation comp could be. And generally they need to pull far ahead in the game to make that synergy work. But since we're even, they're just kind of doing both. The team fights when they go in aren't all that ideal because a Shivana is diving in with the Nidalee Spear. Like, it's not a whole team diving in. Uh, they have to preempt their fights with Nidalee Poke and then find their way in. Coast has been able to handle a bit of the laning phase here, but as you're seeing, everything on the side of the map is on Coast's side. So Curse is able to find a back a little bit of ground here as they're transitioning through the map. Three kills coming on to Cop. He got those as everybody started to move around out of the laning phase as they got Quasi teleport in the bottom lane. So the laning phase wasn't the best thing for Curse here, but Coast is starting to be lackluster. We're starting to see a flop in the game. Yeah, absolutely. They're they're not moving around too much. The We're in that stage of the game where the middle turrets are gone on both sides, but since it's a close game, neither team can actually take control of a jungle. And it's most likely going to be decided by one type of big clash. Knowing that Voiboy has his Infinity Edge and his Static Shiv completed is a big spike in power for him. He should be able to have a lot more impact. And if he doesn't have impact in the next fight, that's going to mean a lot of trouble yeah, for Curse. That's almost that's like falling down the full flight of stairs. There may have been a few stairs to fall down here, but the next one really needs to prove useful. they got to gain all the gold that they have, the kills coming in from at least Wiz Fusion. Get that money back. They are setting up to do just that. Teleports up onto Mundo, but everything has everything. Everyone has everything up from summoners to abilities right now. So this next fight is going to be what they bring to the table. Good dodge by C. Kent there. It looks like they're just working the waves, keeping safety with six minions. Trying to aim those spears around the wind walls, <laughs> not trying to go in on the initiation. Then Zion trying his darndest to get that turret down, just brawling Mundo. He should be ulting him if, soon if they decide to keep fighting. The fight seems to work until Trundle alts, and then he just steals all of your resistances, and he starts to bash your face in with a club. Oh, teleport behind Coast. This is the fight. Nintendo gets hit up. He's the only one, though. Where is he coming in? It's going to be right above them. 
He's already in the fight, and this is when Mundo is the most effective. A great chain of corruption, locking down three members. Does this stop Quaz from doing enough without follow-up? A great kite coming in, but Boy Boy reaches the back line. Another attack. Daydream puts on his shield. The true damage burns through. The Ignite gets the kill from Zekent, and they continue the fight behind Baron. Going down through the back alleys on this one. We're going coast Ooh. to coast. Dominates still on the heels of Zion Spartan. Zion doing what he can. The alt wearing off now. Oh. And he gets the spear right over the shoulder. Pie to the face of Quaz. And it looks like they're both going to turn tail. Again, a two to two fight. I actually think that Curse had three. It's just the fight was so right, long right. that Coast was able to get a couple back. The heals from Shifter were huge in that fight. And of course, the start was completely in favor of Curse because Quas came in like a monster at the top. Obviously, the crowd control from Coast kept him back a little bit, but it was the extended chase of Curse that granted them so much and the chase of Boy Boy going all in, dashing, I believe, to Tibbers, then flashing for another dash, was able to get him in that far. Once Ooh. again, I know, like really weird fights. If Zion Spartan would have been out of mana, they would have been able to get away from this much easier because the pillars yeah. would have been spammed again and again. And it just goes to show the kiting potential, even without the pillar, of Trundle and Nidalee being able to just go back and kite four people. Oh, the spider! Wow. So close. And there's actually a Baron going on right now from Coast. Curse can't make it back in time. We saw this yesterday in Europe. Very nice job. A great fight. The take there. Dominate was just outside of range. And Coast grabs something very big. Just to show you how this game is going with that, they're still down in gold right now. So mm. these guys are completely neck and neck. Yeah, check out the farm of Cop and Voiboy. Boy. That's the big gold discrepancies yep. right there. It's 60 ahead of Wiz Fusion. And then Voiboy, Boy, 40 ahead of Shifters Nidalee. Overall in gold, Cop is just a monster in this game. And he's going to be the one that actually has to kind of put on his backpack and carry. Voiboy Boy keeping that CS. He has been roaming, so that's coming from the jungle as well. He's made himself in the bottom lane at, at, for, I think it was about two and a half minutes he was split pushing. But they're transitioning in and out of different ways of play throughout this game because it's necessary. They have to adapt. And like you said, it's just been an outrageous game so far. Yeah, uh oh, Zion Spartan. Okay, I don't know if you get out of this one. Oh, Zion Spartan tries to. Nope. Nope, no, no, I'm just going to say here. He gets taken down. Very nice job there. Trundle will not be able to help for the dragon. And I believe uh, nobody's going to get the dragon either because it's down. I really like what <laughs> Curse did there. Um, when the Baron was taken by Coast, it meant that Coast had no way of getting wards in the dragon side of the map. And Curse would have known this. Therefore, they invaded through that area to the blue buff and knew that someone from Coast was going to be coming by uh, with no knowledge. Because normally when a team has Baron like Coast does, they don't expect a team to five man invade their jungle and wait for catch. Only because of the extended team fight before the Baron and then the Baron right. sneak. Any ward that would have been placed in the jungle previously would have expired. And that's why Curse was able to pick up the kill and the dragon, which as long as they can outlast more of this Baron buff, right. is the same gold traded and nothing lost. Yeah. It's absolutely what needs to happen. The kills, follow up after that. Curse struggled with that a bit in uh, seasons past, but right now they're doing quite a good job, especially keeping this game on par, or both teams keeping this game on par with each other. Like you said, the CS discrepancy is going to start coming in really big, and we've seen the game shift a little bit as Void Boy did get into his fighting phase. They were able to break that laning, and it's kind of a cause. We saw Shifter in the last fight only throwing spears. He got two kills in the end, mm -hmm. but he wasn't able to help initially because everybody's getting too big. That's almost what Shifter is going to be doing for the whole game. Yeah. That, that's what AP Nidalee is. Yeah. She only throws spears unless she's finishing off or chasing down at the yeah. end of the fight, in which case she's going to maybe jump on top of people. Which is why I feel like Coast needs to set up more of a defensive line, or offensive line, I right. guess, to stop Curse from diving on top of them. But to do that, Zion Spartan needs to be with the team, and he's always off split pushing with Trundle. Which is why when old uh, push comps and poke comps used to happen, Trundle was in the jungle because he was more likely to be accessible to the rest of the team. It's a little odd here that he has to be way off in the top lane, unable to be the disengage for his team, and instead be that split push presence. I think Curse wants to go on this as soon as that Baron wears off. You look at three of these inventories, three Negatron cloaks being picked up recently to really stop that Nidalee, stop that Daydream and Tibber's attack, start fight damage. So once that wears, oh my gosh, just going ham here. Zion Spartan tried to get onto Quaz, he throws down the pillar. CC break's gonna be there a little bit for Quaz, so he gets out safe. They have about a minute left on Baron, about 45 seconds. So we'll see what Curse does as soon as they see that pop. Zion is absolutely 
beating that top lane. You can see the one wind wall comes in mm -hmm. and s does stop the spear, but that's got a pretty long cooldown. It'll only stop one every once in a while. The poke's going to continue to rain down on Curse. You just got to catch the rest of them so it catch, doesn't hurt. Don't catch the spear. Don't catch the spears. Bad idea. So it looks like Coast is trying to be definitive now. Finally, we get the Nidalee composition into order. They're throwing spears from the Fog of War as much as they can. This is what they wanted. They finally, 31 minutes in, yeah. set up the poke. You can see the <laughs> piercing arrows now coming through. Still no Last Whisper on Whis Fusion, but they're pushing the waves back. It's different. There is somewhat limited wave clear on Curse because Cop actually went with a Phantom Dancer instead of a Static Shiv, so the team wave clear is a little bit lower and it puts them, it makes them vulnerable to some of that poke a little bit more so. But no turret damage is really done, and they decide to roam and rotate. Do you think that's left up to enough of Boy Boy that he's been farming so much? Oh, actually, they take this turret down, dominate just on the outside. They get the Nintendo, but that's not exactly what they wanted. And this, without Baron, they're now trying to take turrets, and Curse does not want to answer. They saw Void Boy bottom, which is why they roamed top, and then they estimated how long it would take Void Boy to get up there. So that's why they were so aggressively taking that turret. There. And Ten Dude now stealing up a little bit more of the jungle. He's been here before. Deja vu. Gonna go ahead and steal that up for himself. No gold discrepancy really to be seen yet. We've been sticking within that 1,000 gold range, which means it's anybody's game. That's not an extra item in anyone's pocket. No. And right now we're seeing Zion Spartan try to get after that Blade of the Rune King into his Randuin's build. Same thing coming out on the side of Quaz as they get tankier because it's their part of the game now. I feel like Zion Spartan is going to be a, quite a monster coming in here. I wonder if he's going to try and peel Voivoy off of his team or whether he's going to try and dive through for Caitlyn and protect Nidalee a little bit. You know... Since these teams aren't fighting too much, it's kind of hard to get a read on exactly what they'll be doing. Plus, Void Boy's Yasuo. Yasuo is a total wild card. Whether or not he wants to go in, if he can hop and get the right people yeah. knocked up with Zekan Salt so he can chain, we just have to wait and see. Very interesting in a way to see both Wiz Fusion, not so much Daydreaming for the Flash, but Distortion Boots quickly focus for those two. They're getting focused a lot. Maybe we get Barrier up, get that Flash up, because we saw Void Boy almost taking out Wiz Fusion in one to two hits before. Mm -hmm. Still no armor, so he's got to stay well clear yeah. of what Voivo has to offer. One of those little tornadoes that come through from Yasuo <laughs> could mean the end of you, so you got to be real careful. Talisman's finished on both sides. Let's see Daydreaming using his there right quick to keep everybody in safe. See that farm, 247 to 248. It's really great. Quaz and Zion Spartan have kept completely even throughout that besides the kills. We saw that Zion Spartan is kind of beaten up on Quaz, but he's found a way to keep himself in the game and that tank position for his team, which kind of gets hard when nobody's been there to help you. It keeps tacking on you that one guy is just keeps taking you out of your lane. So mentality is really in this one. Oh. Dodging out spears. Knowing that if Shifter can get his Void Staff, sooner rather than later. It would allow Coast to set up right. another siege. They out-rotated Curse a little bit in order to get their fourth turret down. I think team composition-wise, Coast should mm. have a good poke advantage, but we've seen what late game Caitlyn can do, especially since Cop is so far ahead. Uh, we looked at Sneaky in the first game we had today, and he got to full, full six yeah. out of Caitlyn, and was just wrecking through the entire TSM lineup. That was both really these guys big. are very content to just kind of farm out a little bit right now because they both have their own late game advantages and disadvantages. Well, what is Curse trying to do with those advantages? Because it seems like it's going to be, as I said, super hard for them to get under turrets or even push turrets when they get there. Yeah, they're just waiting for Cop to get to an extremely strong point or Void Boy to finish his last whisper oh, as well. Yeah. And then they're going to be a little bit stronger and have a little bit more target neutrality for what they want to hit. With that Guardian Angel, he can be a little dangerous as well. Void Boy likes to be aggressive, as we said before, so that's only giving him the right to do so. Dragon being taken out here by Zion Spartan. Doesn't look like the team will draw any. Oh, maybe. Z Kent says it's there. Quaz is going to be coming up to the bottom. <laughs> Looks like they may have just set this up for him. No jungler here to have a smite war. This is going to be. Actually, here comes Shivana. Nintendo will be there in time. But it does not look like it'll be there. It's a nice little polymorph to stop any type of engagement. And that gives Void Boy a quick slip out. 
it's a lot of dragon gold at this point too. It is. 260 yep. gold per yep. person. There's only 40 less gold per person than the Baron would give. Right. And because they got it checked at the wrong time there, Coast was not able to support. They did a back and forth between Baron and wanted to get some vision control. Now they're gonna run over here, but if anything, Rib, this will force a fight. This is kind of scary. Because has teleport up. Smites were not used for that last Baron, so this is going to be a 50-50. Balls in the air for both teams on this one. The wards are in as well. They took it down to half 36 already. 36 minutes, and that Baron is looking quite angry in this fight, but Curse wants in a little bit more. Zion Spartan keeps trying to get the pillar out, trying to stop that last. Back, engage the teleport coming into the fight. He stole it's it. It's going to dominate. Locks it down. He gets a double. He gets a kill on it as well. While taking down Baron, Z can't finds a kill. That wasn't even from Ignite. They are putting out all the abilities. They're going to continue this fight. And we've seen what Baron can do to a team when they think they're ahead. And has put Coast even farther behind now. And Quas may not stop this engage. A big heal there could deter him. But he's going to keep going. The ultimate is not even up for him. It's only half done coming up but he's able to waltz right through. They know the power of their champions and where they're at in the game right now. Just like that, the game completely swings in Curse's favor. A dangerous call by Curse does not work out in the slightest. Getting Baron stolen and then yep. they completely ran away. One of the last things you want to do as a poke comp riv, or at least with poke potential, is corner yourself into a pit where you can't run away. Oh, that was a great cocoon coming out. Very nice job by Dominate, waiting for the pounce, and then hitting the cocoon. And you know, so often I see teams just run away once the Baron gets stolen as well without trying to fight. That happened again there by Coast. Yep. Then the catch on shifter is just all snowballing together right now. They might just keep pushing this for more. Yeah, we said it before, Coast, like you said, that poke comp. Curse wants to get out of the laning phase and into the fight phase. And around Baron, that's a perfect place to fight. It's a boxing ring. They take it down, and it looks like they're going for extra rounds on this one. Wiz Fusion finds himself thrown in the towel. Nintendo X could be next. The tankiest are falling the quickest, and that's not what you want to see on the Nexus take. If Cop can stay alive through this one and finish off the turrets, nope, he can't. But nope. the curse might end it. <laughs> Cop. Get himself into that aggressive position. Everybody likes to play style. He brings to the table now. And Curse going to be taking out Coast, bringing in their first victory of the spring split in 2014. And just like that, Curse just turns the game on its head, takes it from even to a 13,000 gold edge because every.